So hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the 2022 International Open Seminar on Semiotics, a tribute to John Dilly on the 50th anniversary of his passing. Welcome you who are watching us on Zoom and you who are watching us on YouTube. This collaborative international open scientific initiative and celebration connects a network of those and of personalities and organizations coming from various environments and with different profiles, all working in unison towards the advancements and propagation of semiotic studies. Today, we have the presentation Hypnotherapy, Epistemology and Semiotics by Professor Dr. Mauricio Newburn. And we are also very glad to receive here Professor Dr. Paulo Alexandre Castro. He'll be the commentator of Professor Mauricio's, uh, New Mauricio Newburn's uh, session. So thank you so much for you both, Professor, for accepting our invitation, for being here today. Thank you so much. Uh, I have to mention that after the presentation, commentary, all people participating here on Zoom are welcome to share, will be welcome to share commentaries, insights, and questions regarding uh, Mauricio Newburn's presentation. I, I have also to mention that you who are watching us on YouTube, if you want to participate in the conversation after the presentation, you have to participate on Zoom in our website, in the session auditorium, there is a link to the link uh, to, the, to the Zoom room where you can participate in the discussion. So I would like to start by introducing Professor Mauricio Nuber. Professor Mauricio Nuber is an associate professor at the Department of Clinical Psychology, Institute of Psychology of the University of Brasilia, Brazil. He is currently the coordinator of the Psychology and Religion Work Group of the National Association of Graduate Studies and Research in Psychology. He is a postdoctoral fellow at the Center Edgar Morin, Ecole de Haut Institut Etudes en Sciences Sociales. Uh, he, friends. he received his PhD from the University of Brasilia and did a sandwich internship at the Laboratoire de Tangement Social Université Paris in Paris, 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 France. He was coordinator of the graduate program in clinical psychology and culture. He is the leader of the research group at CNPQ called Complexity, Hypnosis and Subjectivity in which the following research lines linked to hyp hypnosis stand out. Clinical applications, epistemology, ethnopsychology, and semiotics. His studies cover topics such as hypnotherapy, trends and culture, ethnopsychology, spirituality, body, chronic pain, semiotics, and iconicity, and seek to develop complex theoretical references for the understanding of hypnosis. He provides clinical services to the community, conceiving the hypnotherapeutic context both as a mode of intervention and as a way to do research. He is a therapist and trainer of therapists. So, Professor Maurice Newburn, thank you so much. Welcome, and you can start your presentation. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. <clears throat> And uh, I would like to, to begin uh, this presentation uh, with my, my exposition. Uh, you can share the, the... yes, please. So <clears throat> hypnosis, semiotics, and epistemology. Uh, to begin this discussion, <clears throat> it's important to, to highlight that uh, in the, the last decades of the 20th century, there was a very interesting discussion, epistemological and historical discussion about hypnosis. And uh, unfortunately, this discussion is no more uh, in, in, in the sen, the scientific sen. But uh, I think uh, it, it would be very interesting 
to put some questions from the authors like Charles Peirce, John Dealey, Farouk Saif, and others. Then, the next, please. One of the most important questions, <clears throat> I am psychologist uh, in my, my for, uh, graduate and undergraduate uh, uh, formation. And uh, one of the most important questions uh, in, in psychology, we always put is, is a science of the human being possible? And <clears throat> this discussion is very large and, and it's not uh, uh, a recent discussion, but uh, it's important because psychology is one of the science which is not so comfortable in the modern paradigm. The modern paradigm, especially influenced by Descartes and Descartes. And then <clears throat> you can find uh, uh, philosophers who say this is not possible, but commonly the psychologists say, yes, we do this. Please, the next. And <clears throat> when we speak about uh, hypnosis, I have a, a, a special interest in Milton Erickson. And I will try to explain in my presentation the reasons, some of the reasons. Uh, in this photo, Milton, Milton Erickson in the left is with his friend, his closer friend, Gregory Bateson, which was, who was also uh, a very good partner. And uh, one of the most interesting uh, principles in Erickson's therapy, hypnotherapy, was the insistence to be a theoretical. Differently uh, from some uh, important names in psychotherapy in 20th century, like uh, Freud, uh, Jung, uh, Moreno, uh, and others, Erickson don't want to, to, to create a theory or a school of psychotherapy. And he, uh, his explanation was much more in this way, because people are different. And if you have one theory, we will not uh, conceive the difference, the, the individual difference. And the therapy he proposed, especially with hypnosis, uh, was extremely uh, uh, concerned, worried about this singularity, these individual features. And this is, uh, was his explanation. If you want a, a general theory, you lost your capacity to understand the individual uh, human being. But uh, I think there is a, a, another question I don't know if he was, he, he had his intention, this intention. Uh, when we uh, have the contact with the authors like uh, Pierce, Billy, Saif, uh, Edgar Mohan, a French author uh, who I like so much, very much, uh, with the next, uh, name, the next please. Because there is a, a metaphysical problem. I think uh, Erickson knew a, a, a level of experience, of human experience, uh, which was not uh, docile, uh, friend of uh, a, a, a Cartesian paradigm. He was uh, talking about something very diaphanous, very elusive, uh, very linked to the, to the, 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 the concepts which were marginal in Cartesian paradigm. And uh, if you think about Farouk Saif, uh, when he used the, 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 the term navigation, we could think that Erickson knows how to navigate this experience to touch and be touched, and uh, how 
to dialogue with this uh, experience. And at the same time, he was not interested in trying to translate this experience in uh, uh, modern categories. In this sense, if you take the, 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 the conference, the, the Charles Space Conference about pragmatism uh, in the beginning of the last century, when you uh, uh, read the seven metaphysical systems, first, uh, uh, makes a, a very interesting uh, affirmation when he, he, he uh, speaks that uh, the Cartesian philosophy was not able to understand or interested to understand the, 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 the first realm, the, the firstness, all the spirits linked to the firstness. And he put some questions there. I will try to, to uh, develop something here. Please, the next. And taking the, this conference of Charles Pierce, uh, he used the, 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 the sentence, experience is our great master. It, it's very interesting to think because uh, it's a kind of epistemological condition. What does experience require of the inquirer? I don't put here the, the idea of research, but I put the idea of inquiry because it's a broad term, the term which can uh, implicate many other things than the, the research and commonly uh, we think research in a, in a more strict sense. And uh, when we, we, we think in this way, uh, I remember a very interesting principle developed by Franz Brentano, who was the, 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 maybe the, 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 the precursor, the, the, the man who, the, 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 the philosopher who begins the phenomenology, was the master of Husserl. When Brentano uh, gave a very interesting uh, teaching when he said that the method the philosophical method uh, should uh, be coherent with the described reality. And then it's important because <clears throat> when I, I put here against the methodological imperialism, uh, commonly when it speaks about the, the war of science, uh, some authors and some groups uh, have the, 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 the trend to, to impose only one kind of methodology to understand whatever they want, every kind of realities. And this is a big problem and a big epistemological problem. Because if you think since the beginning of the science, uh, the, the ideas developed by Galileo and Newton were very current if you think about the matter. But if, if you think about life, it's not exactly uh, so coherent. And if you think about intelligence or subjectivity, uh, the coherence is still, uh, it, it's not so, so good. This is maybe worse. And in this way, when we talk about this principle, the experience is our great master. We need to, uh, firstly, uh, have an effort to <clears throat> describe or understand what kind of experience is hypnosis. What's going to talk about when we use the term hypnosis? Please, the next. And, and then, uh, when I, I, I talk about hypnosis, I use the, the, the two uh, good, big schools uh, represented in the beginning of this, this practice. The first school uh, was in, in 
Nancy. They understand hypnosis uh, such as the communication, the influence, the suggestion, uh, interactive process. And the school, the second school in Paris, represented by Jean-Martin Charcot, uh, when they understand hypnosis like a state, a state of mind. In uh, why I try to fuse this, because in my point of view, and I, I am hypnotherapist, the two things are very implicated. And Milton Erickson uh, used, the, used both. Sometimes he will talk about the hypnosis, like a, a communication of ideas. In other moments, he will talk about states, states of learning and, and other things. And this is a very interesting because when I, I, I talk about states, the trans states, uh, one of its characteristics is the, the the alterations of the reference of reality between ego and the world. What kind of alteration? What kind of reference? The realities uh, about uh, matter, space, time, order, body, and still about some values, ethical and aesthetical values. For example, the bad and the good, male and female, uh, human and uh, uh, divine and spiritual, sacred and profane, and the ugly and the beautiful, and others. The, the, the list is, is a very, very big. And with these alterations, commonly other process became from the self and K uh, create new realities at, at least uh, at, at that moment. And this can favorize a very important uh, therapeutic process. It's a, one of the, 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 the definitions who tries to, uh, to integrate the interactive process in general, developed by techniques, but in a ritual trance, for example, they can be developed by music, by singing, by rituals, and uh, the, the state. The, the next point is the concept of hypnogenesis. What is this? If you have a patient in, in hypnotherapy, in psychotherapy, in uh, other practice of, of healing, of education, this patient will have the, 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 the trend to reproduce your ideas. It's very interesting to understand, to think about, because not only in hypnosis, uh, when we talk about therapists, the patients who goes to a humanist therapist commonly talk about uh, uh, freedom, emancipation, the free will and others. If you speak with a patient of psychoanalysis, commonly he trained to, to, to explain his or her history from the past, from the childhood. If you have a patient from a cognitive therapy or behavioral cognitive therapy, they train to explain the process uh, from the, the reference of efficacy. It's very, very common. And uh, when we think about uh, hypnogenesis, why it's important in epistemological terms? Because it's a way, it's a principle, uh, which breaks the separation between subject and object. To Freud, for example, it was one of the most important reasons that led, led, led him to abandon hypnosis. 
It's a kind of uh, uh, epistemological nightmare because Freud uh, was uh, very implicated with the idea of create a setting uh, of confiability of objective data like we can find in the, 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 the physics laboratory. But he used a, a different methodology and he used the clinical setting to do this. And when he, he worked, firstly, he had a personal difficulty with hypnosis. And second, he didn't understand if people were talking with the intention to, to, to take him to be grateful because he was a physician uh, or if they are uh, given a, a, a good witness, a good uh, information, uh, a scientific information about his changes, his or her changes. Then this was very complicated. And one of the most important reasons as discussed by Isabel Stengers to, to Freud's abandon of hypnosis. Then hypnogenesis is something interesting because what you gave, you give to the nature, to this kind of reality, it will give you back. If you change your methodology, if you can give you new data or new science, different signs. So you need to, 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 to think about when we talk about the research that there is nothing absolute. In that approach, was, uh, it's important to think about. It's a principle developed by Milton Erickson. And Erickson, unlike the classical hypnosis, uh, he didn't use it very much the, the direct commands, direct orders. He preferred to talk uh, indirectly, to story talk, uh, storytelling, to use metaphors, puzzles, interpersonal techniques, task prescriptions, to put symbolically and very subtly the situation and let the people to create something new. Yeah, according to, to their own potentialities. And what do you think when, when we speak about indirect approach? And as Erickson understand, understood what was hypnogenesis, I think he used a kind of communication very open, very uh, founded on iconicity to touch people in a very imaginary way in a very uh, a first experience way to create something new using their own references. So if they will give me back something, I will give them something uh, which they can put their signatures. I think there is something like this. The protagonist work and work with Utilization approach. What is utilization approach in Milton Erickson? Utilization was a principle in which uh, we, the therapist, should use anything you, the, 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 the patient brings to the, the relational setting. For example, a symptom, a resistance, uh, a way of, uh, of uh, relationship to establish a relationship, an idea, everything that could be used to favorably to the own patient. And why Erickson used this? Firstly, he was very critical with many therapists with try to put only one kind of setting for everybody. And if he uh, believes in, in, in singularity, in the unique characteristics of the individual, it would be uh, uh, incoherent. And 
Secondly, Ericsson believed that uh, people would, would exercise the things they should, they, they know how to do. And then these characteristics, of course, in a very protected way, were used by people to help themselves. For example, there is a, a very interesting example when a man come to Ericsson's office and he could not sit on the chair. He was always walking, walking, walking. And other therapists had said to him he was not collaborative, a very anxious man. What Ericsson uh, said to him, Please, may you help me? How, Dr. Erickson? Uh, let me accompany you with my words. And you continue to walk on the, the, the room. And the guy continued to walk. And Erickson said, may you give uh, five steps in this direction? And the guy gave the, step, the steps. Now, may you give eight steps in other direction? And the guy continue to do. And then they establish a kind of rapport, rapport, a relationship, a very responsive relationship. And since uh, after some minutes, the guys sit down on the chair and begin a trans process. It's an example of ut utilization. And then it's important because uh, when Ericsson proposed this kind of setting, allied to indirect approach, he exercised a kind of acceptation and he incentivated a protagonist, a proactive movement, attitude with his patients. No, no absoluteness, as discussed very, uh, in a very interesting way by Farouk Saif and also John Dilly, especially in time and space. Commonly, people uh, suffer a lot because they have a very, very limited and strong ideas about time and space and matter. And this kind of beliefs of perception uh, don't offer them options and paradoxes. As I had said in, the, in, the, in my definition about trends, Trans experience is something very, very paradoxical because, uh, for example, what's internal, what's external, what's individual, what's collective. In a trans experience is something uh, totally individual and totally collective. For example, the religious trends are very illustrative to, to show, to demonstrate this, because commonly they are inhabited by cultural beings. But even in psychotherapy, in, in a private uh, hypnotherapy, commonly we can find uh, important semiotic forms from other person, from persons from the culture, from persons from the familiar history and others. Please the next. Uh, the transgression of otherness, commonly in, in hypnosis, uh, we can find the reports of people who say that uh, as if the therapist was inside my mind, Erickson used this, but uh, we can perceive, I am also a teacher, a, a professor in, in, in hypnosis. And sometimes my, my, my students uh, came and, and said me about dreams, in which they dream with their, 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 their clients. Then there is a kind of interpenetration and it's very coherent with a semiotic notion of the self. The multiple selves, I put here the idea, uh, especially from Edgar Morin, uh, a very interesting French philosopher, in which during trance, <clears throat> we can think about the, the different semiotic forms. Uh, for example, somebody from the past, a very intimate 
figures from the past who came to, to say something important to this person, a kind of you, uh, a cultural being, a saint, for example, an angel, who invites somebody to a spiritual and collective mission, maybe an us or a we, or a kind of phenomena very uh, linked to our uh, phylogenetic heritage. For example, during hypnosis, people can have a, a, a very strong anesthesia with, uh, in the body or in the part of the body. And, and this is very uh, linked to our uh, uh, ancestral heritage, phylogenetic heritage. And this, he creating a desirable outcomes beyond the results, because uh, commonly the, the research about hypnosis uh, nowadays is very interested in results. Of course, it's, it's important. That I, we never deny this. And Ericsson was very interested in results. But there was a kind of uh, integration uh, with uh, themselves, uh, which is extremely important because uh, it's a kind of reconciliation with themselves. And for me, it's very difficult to measure. And at, 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 at the same time, it's something, it's a very uh, reference to think about a good process of navigation, this kind of navigation in therapy. And in consequence, <clears throat> uh, this experience is extremely, uh, extremely uh, rich in recreating the reference of reality. Because trans can be uh, 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 compared with the experience of uh, death and rebirth. Uh, Gregory Bateson and Margaret Mead, they have uh, uh, in, in Bali, I think it was Bali, and yeah. they uh, have a, a very beautiful uh, movie, I think 20 minutes, in which they, they, they uh, present a, a kind of trans performance in which there is the, 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 the people, the, 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 the personage who represented the death and others who represented the life. It's a kind of dance, a battle, was continually, continuously uh, in, in, uh, in movement. And I think, uh, especially when, when the, 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 the clients, the patients talk about this, uh, that trans have the, 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 the strong possibility of recreating this reference. And there is a kind of rebirth, a kind of novelty, which is very important in therapeutic terms, and I think in epistemological terms also. Please, the next. Uh, here, this photo uh, in the right, Milton Erickson, in the left, Elizabeth Erickson, uh, his wife, and in the center, Margaret Mead. And the, if we have this kind of reality, a very complex kind of reality, I would not say uh, there is only a, a unique way to, to study this, because I think many questions is still open, maybe the majority of questions, but we can put some reference to establish a dialogue with this reality. And it's especially uh, inspired in, in first category of phenomenology, firstness, secondness, and thirdness, but in a very uh, uh, articulated movement, in a aspiral movement, in a progressive movement during a therapeutic process. Please, the next. Uh, here, Ericsson, maybe uh, it, this was one of the last pictures of Milton Erickson. He was died in 80. And when I talk about the first attitude, it's uh, very uh, exclusively linked to idea, the idea of abduction. 
but it is closely linked to idea very frequent in humanist psychology to be with, to be here and now, in presentness. It's a kind of acceptance, not in the way that I, I will not have a, 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 a prejudgment about others, but I will in a kind of disponibility to be with this person. And then it's a, a very interesting way to, to, to pr promote the therapeutic contract because the therapeutic contract has a kind of uh, uh, objective uh, part in which they can talk about uh, uh, how many times in the week, uh, the price, uh the the objective the nature of the problem of the, of the therapy but there is a kind uh, uh of uh, of a contract which begin in this dimension in a very subjective dimension and i put here the the, the latin word accordare accordare which implicates uh in harmony but here it has also a uh, uh, a proximity with the word cardio in Latin, which means heart. There is, my heart is with yours. And this is uh, in, in a very uh, passive attitude of acceptance in which I receive this order. Uh, Thomas Sibiok has a, a very interesting book in which he say, I am a verb, and I think I am a verb. And this is, this is interesting because uh, the verb is an icon, if you think in iconicity. And as if at this moment, this attitude promote the therapist like an icon and the client like an icon, and they will interpenetrate inter each other. Then there is a kind of transgressions of otherness. Maybe in the past, it can inspire the research in the 19th century about telepathy, because it's very frequent in, in, in hypnosis, the sensations of uh, somebody is reading the other thoughts. And it's a kind of uh, 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 attitude of to be available to be in disponibility to others. And then when we speak about uh, this with uh, therapists, frequently they say about feeling sensibility uh, toward the others. And it's very motivated by this kind of attitude. It's a kind of establish a, a, a relationship with uh, this dimension, the hypnosis. Please, the next. The second attitude, the second attitude is much more the interaction, the brute force, and the use of techniques. Uh, it established a kind of choreography, a kind of dance, and the concrete touch. For example, uh, in, 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 in many languages, I believe in all languages, people can uh, describe metaphorically how some words touch their bodies influence them by their bodies how uh, a new you receive will be uh, received by your body and it's, it can be very violent but it can be very uh, very uh, interesting very very good very agreeable and then when we talk about this, uh, Ericsson, for example, uh, has a, a very good skill to develop a kind of uh, role, a therapeutic role, which be very uh, useful and complementary to the, the, the client's role. For example, he could be competitive with somebody who needs the, competi the competitive setting. He could be very uh, uh, maternal, he could be very professor, he could be very 
friend. And this choreography is interesting because uh, uh, commonly therapists uh, think they, they should have only one way uh, to, to only, one, only one kind of role to interact with others. And this implicates a, 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 a proximity with the, the, the theater. If you can study about uh, Becker and the, the Russian theater, uh, which I don't remember now. And in, in the sense that we need to help people uh, to dance the music they know how to dance. If somebody is, is dancing uh, tango, I should not impose them to dance samba or to dance valsa. I need to respect this way of dance and help them to appreciate their own way of dance. Please the next. The third attitudes, uh, concepts, acts, it's linked to induction. It's very uh, important here, the, the, the use of semiotic concepts. The notion of sadness is particularly important as you can see uh, during the exposition. And uh, it has a, a special attention concerning to agency and meaning. If the second attitude is very implicated with the touch, the interaction, uh, the third attitude is concerned with the, the capacity to think about and to observe, to understand how people appropriate the hypnotic experience and how create new meanings about this. And to the therapy, to you know, the therapist, it implicates uh, a kind of reflex reflexivity and uh, integration with their own ethos, their own belongings. In this, this, uh, this figure, which will be from my book, uh, this is a, a caricature of Milton Erickson. And you can see here uh, very, uh, a lot of icons of uh, him uh, ancestrality. For example, the Viking boat, the Indian uh, houses there, the, uh, the, 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 the icons of North American colonization, the books, the, the, the symbol of uh, hypnosis with uh, hypnos, the, the Greek uh, god, and the boat, which is very important for him uh, because of a uh, uh, experience he had uh, in, in his, uh, before begin the, the university. And <clears throat> when we think each of us is a kind of, uh, of uh, a sign, but a sign of what? A sign of different kinds of belongings, different kinds of influence, then the hypnotic meeting is not only hypnotic, I'm not uh, a meeting of individuals. It's a meeting of words. You think of, if you think about the semiosphere, it could be very interesting to, 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 to develop these ideas. And the next, please. Uh, and, and then when we, we think about these three attitudes, we can uh, discuss a little more about how can we study hypnosis. We can think about the articulates the modes of reasoning, abduction, deduction, and induction, but we need to, to, to consider that we're not in the lab. We are not studying uh, a, a, a chemical reaction. We are studying a reality with uh, very specific characteristics. So the induction will not be uh, developed in the same way. Other uh, possible uh, reference is the idea of construction of information. In the reference, here I put uh, uh, a text by Binfred Net when he discussed a very interesting things about. And I, I, I put here 
thinking about the hypnosis in three ideas. The idea of information is uh, linked to give form to, to give meaning. But when we think about information uh, in, in, in hypnosis especially, but I think it's maybe it's universal and hypnogenesis, there is a kind of deformation always when we establish a, a relationship to study something or somebody. Then there is a kind of formation, something new can begin. And perhaps a kind of transformation, especially if this field of study and the inquirer develop new habits, new ways of agency. And same, I, I think in this way, the desirable outcomes because of course, I, I think it's very interesting, the, 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 the current research in hypnosis, but this idea of outcomes commonly is important only to psychotherapists. And this difference between psychotherapy as an application and the science developed in, in uh, labs or experimental settings, in my point of view, this division is, is very, very rigid and they should communicate much more between them because I think psychotherapy can be also a very good, important way of research. And the next, please. And <clears throat> continuing, an uh, other way to understand this, this possibility of investigation, of inquiry, the different kind of dialogue, because the dialogue is firstly in one person and another person, but it's not only with words, as discussed by Safe by by Dili, and the person with himself or herself, but this is very uh, implicated with the idea of ethos, because the self is not only individual, it's a collective self also, and especially collective self. It's a, a, a <clears throat> so we can think of hypnosis in, in very different ways when we think about dialogue. Uh, the public reflection, I don't put here the idea of consensus, consensual, because uh, it's uh, polemic currently, if you think in epistemology, but the capacity to, to have the competent public to discuss. And in Portuguese, in Brazil, we have a sociologist named Pedro Demo, who speak about discutibility. I don't know if the word is correctly translated, but the capacity to open a good discussion, a scientific discussion about something. Because the idea of consensus is uh, many, many of them put questions about this. The meeting of words, and this is an idea which for me is very uh, important from ethnopsychology. I put here Tobina Tan, uh, a, a, a very important name in ethnopsychology. When he makes the question, how can we speak about others of firstly we should speak with others and then he puts the possibility to who legitimates the, the knowledge we develop it in the in the inquiry and ethnopsychology is a way uh, to to implicate the the patients the users the clients uh, the, the subjects to contribute in this kind of legitimacy. Because uh, uh, currently in many, in many academic uh, uh, fields, there is a, a strong discussions about how science specifically is used as a way of colonization. And so it's uh, uh, some uh, of uh, important question and hypnosis is particularly interesting in this way 
since uh, many and many uh, in many cultures uh, we can say that they develop this all technologies of trance and hypnosis especially linked to other kinds of of knowledge, collective knowledge, such as religion. And the next, please. So, uh, I thank you for your uh, attention, and, and we are open to discussion. I put here some questions, some some reference. I should put some more, but I can send after if you need. Okay, Professor Mauricio, thank you so much. It was a very insightful and very brilliant presentation, really. So allow me to invite Professor Paulo Alexandre de Castro to give her his commentary, but let me make introduce himself very briefly. So Professor Alexandre de Castro is a full member of the Institute for Philosophical Studies at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities of the University of Coimbra. He has a PhD in Philosophy of Mind at the University of Minho, or Arminho, and he has his Master in Phenomenology and Hermeneutics, the School of Arts and Humanities of the University of Lisbon. He has a degree in Philosophy, postdoc in Digital Art, University of Fernando Pessoa, PDC, uh, YP from the London College of Clinical Hypnosis and the Intermediate Level of Integrative Psychotherapy course from the Milton Erickson Institute in Portugal. Author of, is author of numerous publications from essays to poetry and Castro is a regular contrib contributor to both national and international journals. So welcome Professor Paulo Alexandre Castro. Thank you for your um, kind words, William. Thank you, Professor Mauricio. Can I can I say just Mauricio? Yes, okay. please, please. Thank you. <laughs> so I was um, I was uh, listening to your marvelous talk, and um, I, I have uh, a few words that uh, I would like to say. Um, but uh, first of all, uh, I must uh, say that um, as a, a general commentary of your uh, talk, I, I would say that it is. Uh, it seems to me that uh, your talk is a little bit more epistemological than um, than uh, from the, the the point of view that would be. I think interesting to discuss uh, the point of view of, of semiotics. Why I'm doing this comment? Because you mentioned one, one, in one phrase, a very short phrase, something that is in exactly that. It's uh, hypnosis is in fact an exercise of semiotics. You mentioned it, that hypnosis was very connected with the semiotics. In my point of view, and I must uh, underline this because this is important, as Mauricio would certainly agree. I see hypnosis as clinical hypnosis, not to be confused with stage hypnosis or for entertainment and other forms of, um, or some kind of mystical forms of hypnosis, okay? So I'm talking as, as uh, from the point of view of clinical hypnosis, not to, to be uh, confused with other kinds of hypnosis, which are um, very suspicious. But from this point of view of clinical hypnosis from the school of um, Milton Erickson, um, it seems to me that is in fact an exercise, an exercise, a pure exercise of semiotics. Well, I took uh, a few notes uh, from your talk, and I'm trying to articulate all the things you said and the things I'm, I was thought at the same time. So um, let's start by saying one important uh, mention, and um, that we, as Portuguese and Mauricio as Brazilian, 
uh, should always mention when talking about hypnosis, because we have a major name, the Abad Faria, Abe Abbot Faria, that was one, one of the most important persons in the, in the, in the beginning of hypnosis. It was um, a Luso Goen Catholic monk who developed the first um, sort of um, um, alteration of um, mind alteration. Um, he, he developed the, um, the method of induction of creating some sort of sleep to induct the, the patient. So um, it, it's just a short note about the um, the Abbot Faria. But um, you also mentioned that uh, Freud, and you correctly mentioned the, the Freud that abandoned the, hypno, the hypnosis. It seems to me that was his major mistake. In fact, if Freud did not abandon hypnosis, he, he would have the opportunity to feel, to achieve a real method to get to the unconscious. Freud couldn't. Professor Paulo Alexandre, you are freezed. I cannot, we cannot hear you. So let's uh, wait a moment. Okay, I, I think we can hear. It's a hypnotic. Okay. Professor, maybe okay. if you... Are you listening to me again? Yes, yes, okay. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, are you listening to me okay? Yes. Yes? Okay. Okay, okay. sorry. Uh, my internet connection is not very good. So I was saying that if Freud had really not abandoned the hypnosis, you will have the opportunity to see the, the importance of the, the method, of the uh, hypnosis method. Uh, what he did not see, he was the, when he was looking for a setting of confidentiality, he could not see that this confidentiality, it happens when the, the, the patient um, goes to this down level of trance. Freud could not see that, I think. So, uh, but this is, uh, um, it's not a specific question, but it's just an appointment because you mentioned it, um, you mentioned Freud about this. So, okay, so considering um, your, in, in general, your talk and then the different reference to Charcot, um, and the others. Um, I, you mentioned that um, sometimes um, Milton Erickson um, did not use direct uh, discourse, but we have um, a famous, a famous episode when when a, a smoker entered the um, the room the, of the Milton Erickson. Uh, smoking and said, please, uh, Dr. Milton Erickson, I would like to stop smoking. And uh, major, um, major uh, names in hypnotherapy knows this story. So he starts saying to this, to this guy that was smoking uh, in, in his very pacific tone, in his very gentle tone, well, if I could smoke, I really don't know how to do it. Should I put the cigar in my right hand or in my left hand? In, in which fingers should I put the cigar? And how about the size of the cigar? Which size should I pick it? And about lighting, how, how can I light the cigar? So after 45 or 50 minutes of talk, the guy look at Milton Erickson, he never smoked again. So this was a, a type of direct discourse. It was not a storytelling. It's not the use of metaphors. It was not the use of some other 
uh, stylistic figures, but it was kind of direct. This is a provocation for you, Mauricio, okay? <laughs> this is to provoke your, your answer to me. <laughs> so, but um, following your, your, your talk, there was this other uh, different stages of hypnotic induction. The abduction, the induction, and the deduction. Well, Milton Erickson, um, uh, as you said uh, rightly, correctly, Milton Erickson uh, look at the, at each patient in a different way. The use of these um, concepts, like utilization, to use the even the, the difficulties from the patients use these these characteristics to conduct the patient into what we what he wanted to do and he adapted um, um, a method that was different for for every patient that is tailoring he was using the the utilization is at the same time to do this tailoring methods i um i for instance, if you are a tailor, you use uh, different measures to each person. So um, Erickson saw th this particular thing that was different from all the other psychotherapies. I can use a different approach to every patient. And this um, um, brings um, a problem to me that, uh, that I, I study these areas for a few years now. And this brings this uh, major problem that when you uh, when you understand different psychotherapies, you have a, a kind of protocol that you can follow. But you have to be as genius as Milton Erickson was to fulfill this method. And this is not easy to do. Sometimes you don't don't catch the the the, the different uh, characteristics of the of the patients you have but uh, there are other things it is in fact um, um, an exercise of semiotics it is in in fact an exercise of uh, pure phenomenology but I want to open um, brackets here because Phenomenology, as Erickson says, or as Erickson mentioned in his works, it's not the same thing that we understand as in Husserl, Sartre, Merleau-Ponty, Heidegger, etc. Phenomenology is the phenomenon of what happens in the unconscious mind, which is very curious because schools of hypnotherapy today still use these uh, this centers, unconscious mind. And this is quite problematic because if you understand the legacy of Freud, you understand the legacy from the, the major names in phenomenology and you try to connect them, you have a major trouble in your mind. It's it's not it's really not easy to understand how different schools can connect in clinical hypnosis. So it's different a different meaning for phenomenology. But the phenomenon that Milton Erickson was thinking about it's that that constellation of signs that we can read in a patient, for instance, the different uh, formations in the face, etc., etc., etc. You know all of them for sure. So. Um, but uh, what is most interesting in your talk, and this is the point that I would like to see more developed since your talk called Hypnotherapy, Epistemology and Semiotics, it's your final sentence. It's a meeting of words. In your, finals, in your, in your final um, talk, you mentioned this phrase, it's a meeting of words. In fact, in a, in a clinical setting, where is the hypnotherapist and the patient, you, what you see, in fact, in a different level, in a rapport 
that is established in the rapport that is established, you see in fact this um, different level of of dialogue, this different level where uh, the words mean only what they mean, and this is a, a very particular state of mind. This is a very particular state of mind. The reality seems to gain a different dimension from the set from the clinical setting. Words have the uh, is it is it as if the words have a special and specific meaning for that setting, and this creates a, a different reality in clinical setting. It's different. Is is it as as if the world, the reality around you, have no way? You know, have no weight. It seems that all the things are different. Um, the hypnotherapist, the patient, are in a bubble, where the the words are have a special meaning only for them, and this is the the part that interests me the the most because it's, um, as you said, a meeting of words. And this meeting of words, it what, it's what gives uh, the special meaning of what can be the exercise of semiotics in hypnotherapy. Um, one of, one of the, the most um, interesting things I, I, could, I could find in the, um, in the clinical hypnosis, it was um, this um, capacity that not only the hypnotherapists have, but also the patients to uh, get together in a, in a different world. I know that uh, most of the people that are not aware of the, the clinical hypnosis um don't understand um or probably will not understand the meaning of when two people uh, meet in a, in a different state of mind um I, just a, a few a, a brief note um three three and a half years ago i have the the honor and pleasure to to have dinner with camilo loriedo and jeff zaig which was a, a, a disciple from Milton Erickson. And um, in, a, in a dinner, I just, um, I, I could see that in fact, there are um, two or three characteristics that makes all the difference when talking to other, when talking to another person. And these two or three characteristics, it's the correct, the, the perfect use of words in context. This makes all the difference. And, and this is what I think it's most, most important when in your talk. There are only world for people who make world with words. You cannot live in a world without words. Words is language. Words is thought words is what build the world so when you build a world in in which we in which we all have uh, problems and you find one person that can understand the the exact the the perfect meaning of your words to describe the world in which that person lives that makes all the difference and that is the perfect exercise of semiotics that we find in clinical hypnosis Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you all for listening to this uh, marvelous talk of Mauricio. And uh, we are all open to, to discuss these, these topics. Please. Um, okay. Please, Professor. Uh, may I? I... Please, Professor. Yeah. Yes, yes. ok. Uh, thank you very much, Paulo. Muito obrigado. It's very good to know uh, a colleague from Portugal uh, with this, this uh, the level of understanding and interest about the hypnosis. It's very, very good to know you. It's a pleasure. 
And I will be uh, uh, synthetic to, to answer to some questions because I would like to, to, to listen if other colleagues have uh, uh, ideas to discuss also. Um, <clears throat> yes, the, the idea, uh, Professor Paulo, Paulo yeah? Sim, sim, if sim. You, yes. Uh, is, was this in Portuguese era mais fácil. <laughs> ah, sem dúvida. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the idea was discussing epistemology because uh, um, uh, it's a, a, a very important subject for me. Uh, and I think it's interesting. Uh, I am a psychologist. And when we study deeply epistemology, we can understand the, the conflicts, the interaction between the tendons, the, the schools of psychology and psychotherapy specifically in a very different way. And you can understand, for example, that many of them are disputing conflict uh, in, in to, to obtain the power and not to, to, to develop a, a good idea. And yes, the, the, the idea was epistemology, but of course, uh, I, I would like to, to, to deep uh, in, 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 in more specifically in, in the questions about semiotics. I think it would be, I would, would uh, do this, but I, I couldn't. And uh, when we talk about uh, if, I, I am right, Joaquim Custódio de Faria. And, and he was very important because maybe he was the first to, to break with the idea of magnetism, animal magnetism. And he believed that we can produce the same phenomena using the words or uh, influence, direct influence by words. And of course, it's a very interesting name. And I think, uh, I don't know, Paulo, if you uh, have a contact with the, the, the French literature about, but uh, in, in, since the, the two last decades in 20th century, uh, in France, there was a lot of works, a very interesting works about the sort of hypnosis. And unfortunately, uh, the, the uh, francophonic word and the anglophonic world, uh, they don't speak very much each other. It yes. could be very interesting, that dialogue, the translation about them. Yes. And Freud, and we can see, uh, we can uh, understand that he had an interest about the hypnosis. Yes, it's uh, in, in, during his life. But in the majority of this, 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 uh, the, his life, and his trajectory as the, 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 the creator of psychoanalysis, he, he was very uh, clear to establish an opposition between hypnosis, uh, for him something cosmetic and superficial, and psychoanalysis. It could be a kind of surgery. Freud believes if he had the truth, he would develop a, a, a most efficient kind of therapy. In the end of his life, <clears throat> and I don't know how to translate this in English, uh, uh, analysis with N and without N, analysis confidence in fin, he assumed that uh, psychoanalysis had the same problems of hypnosis. And for me, it's like a, a net of courage. But I think there was Freud like a philosopher, a thinker, and not the, the chief, the boss of psychoanalysis. And the majority uh, of psychoanalysts that I, I know, I know a lot of them, uh, they believe in this opposition. And there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, texts of Freud in which they establish this opposition. For example, about psychotherapy and analytical therapy, uh, recommendation to physicians who practice psychoanalysis, and they, he is very, but in fact, <clears throat> theoretically, he had the interest. And uh, Sando Ferenczi, the, the eminent uh, uh, psychoanalyst who was his friend, was uh, more interested in, in hypnosis and used it as uh, therapist hypnosis also. It could be a very interesting thing to, to, 
to, to study. Uh, in, in this example, you use it about uh, uh, the, the guy who wanted to stop to, to smoke. I think he was indirect. He used direct words, but in a very symbolic way, he did not explain this. He was a kind of performance uh, playing with the contradiction. I can put the cigarette here, but I can't put here. May you imagine the, the, the how can you translate Peju? Peju. Routine or boredom? Boredom. The, boredom. the boredom situation. In 50 minutes, thank you. The, the, in 50 minutes, somebody repeating this. So uh, he's showing, of course, you can uh, uh, take this in, in a kind of word, but we, when we show, we can open any possibility of words. And then uh, I agree with you and in your, your, one of your last words, uh, when we talk about the importance of words, but uh, Ericsson used a kind of performance like a theater, to show many things. And Jeffrey Zag and, and Brent Gary have a book about Ericsson's letters, the exchange letters. And, and, and Zag had the, the interest about theater uh, because of this, this Ericssonian characteristics. So it's, I, 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 yes, it was direct, but was also very indirect because he was representing something as a kind of caricature of the, the ambiguity of this man. Probably I think was something like this. So as direct, but was also indirect in a, in a very symbolical, or I don't know if the word is, is good, but a meta level of, of reflection. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Uh, uh, Ericsson was somebody uh, very genial. He was a genius to understand human beings, to create something new. I, I am not a genius, <laughs> but uh, for example, uh, Paulo, with my students, <clears throat> when uh, we, we work here in university uh, with people, uh, uh, chronic pain patients, and commonly they have a, a, a very difficult histories uh, so, such as violence, uh, mistreatment in the, in the, in the, the, the family, uh, poverty, uh, uh, no money and, and other things, depression, okay. uh, suicide, and okay. uh, commonly the students came to, to, to the, the, the mentoring, they're scared. Oh, professor, what kind of technique may I use? And I always answer, my protocol is, is, is simple. And I, I say to hey, them, give them a coffee. Uh, but professor, there is no coffee here. Uh, yes, but you can give them attention. You can be interested about them. You can establish a kind of connection with them. Then you begin to understand the hypnosis. When you, you know you, you are sure, you can begin to use techniques. Then in this way, it's, it's, it's closer to the idea of first attitude. I, I, uh, I, I put here. And uh, in this, uh, so I, I, I agree with you uh, to create things like Ericsson uh, commonly used, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I don't know how to do this, but we can have reference because the idea of protocol may be uh, in some moments, it's, it's very rigid, very limited also. Um, yes, uh, uh, when I use the phenomenology here, and uh, I was in the, in the sense of uh, Charles, P Charles P. Uh, Yeah, Yes, I, 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 I seated Brentano and Russell in the beginning, but the, the, the dominant use here was, was of Charles Pierce. And I, I, I know uh, the, in hypnosis, the idea of phenomenon, uh, as, as you described. Uh, yet, and I think it's a, 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 you, you, you touch it. A, a, a very important question uh, when you uh, said something about the use of unconscious mind. 
which is philosophically uh, complicated. Complicated because if you think the idea of unconscious, despite these roots in the the Renaissance, uh, have uh, something very mechanic in the, the 19th century. I, I think the contemporary philosophers, I don't know if they, if they use uh, they would use this this idea. Well, you are a philosopher; you can uh, say much more about this. And um, Yes, the idea of meeting off words and, 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 and uh, Charles Peirce uh, always said that uh, the uh, individual idea is like a practical joke. He didn't deny the idea of individuality, but he said that uh, we are a kind of unity with multiplicities of signs originated with our meetings, our ancestrality, uh, and many of kind of influence. And I think they are present in, 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 in the, the hypnotic setting. And uh, in this way, it's uh, maybe once the most interesting thing in, in, in uh, uh, hypnosis, hyp hypnotherapy, uh, because sometimes this, uh, this influence uh, begins with a, a sensation in the body. Uh, for example, in, in discussion with my students, they feel after the discussion with, uh, uh, the, uh, with the, the, the patient, they feel something here, very hard here. Uh, they have a dream. They have a kind of persistent idea that they don't know how to translate this. And when we open the possibility to express this, the signs, they can construct very, very interesting things, uh, which link them with the other kind of belongings, other kind of relationships, which are present there. And as discussed by a, a, a very good therapist in, in Belgium, Moni Elkain, who talk, had talked about the, the meeting of singularities, what he, he, he named singularities, uh, these kind of signs which are not uh, predicted in our theories. I don't know if it's a good definition, but it's very practical to, to understand. And, and I think this is very uh, important to think uh, about the possibility of new, new creations. Uh, I'm very glad, Paulo. Thank you very much for your contribution. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mauricio. Uh, uh, I just, I, I don't know if uh, William, I can. Um, yeah, please, you can. Yes. Short thing. yes. One is one, is one that um, Mauricio um, spoke about that is the difficulty of, um, of the academic. Uh, the, uh, the academy understand the clinical hypnosis benefits. So if you try to uh, um, send an article to a psychology review or journal, uh, they refuse it immediately in three or five days, which is um, <laughs> only, uh, almost a record. <laughs> If you want to, to write something about clinical hypnosis, in three days you have a refused answer. Yes. So in the academy, in the faculties, universities, they don't deal very um, uh, in the in the very correct way and uh, about clinical hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I want to mention, and and this is important because I feel that um, um, I think uh, Jeff and uh, Jeff Sig and um, some others are really uh, interesting in this kind of performance in, in the um, hypnotic, uh, hypnotic setting. And I see that the, the tendency of using this uh, kind of uh, theatrical performance, it's one of the, um, the most used by now. I don't know if they are trying to copy Milton Erickson in some way, or if they are to, um, um, they are inventing some other way of uh, psychotherapy. But um, I see that the the most the most um, 
the most important figures in clinical hypnosis are using this kind of performance. Okay. <laughs> It's it's the same thing that uh, Milton Erickson did. The the anecdote, the um, the theatrical theatrical performance, um, the gestures, the the way they look, the way they even the way they dress, <laughs> in some yes. cases, yes. are important to that hypnotic uh, um, stage. But uh, just to mention a, a few uh, things. Um, that I forget um, a few minutes ago. Um, this is not new. Uh, these games from the Egyptians, these games, we find this in the Roman Empire. There were um, um, a sleeping treatments. Um, it was not called hypnotic schools or uh, hypnosis or uh, something like that but the, it, it was sleeping treatment so this is um, it, this is was used uh, many years ago thousand years ago but in fact only in the 18th century re was rediscovered and this is uh, quite important for the, the importance of the of what you were saying about the discussion between the, the francophone world and the Anglo in fact, if we pay attention to the, the publications in France, you see, for instance, that in um, 2018, a man was, um, how do you say, um, was uh, a chirurgic in the heart uh, with, with the hypnosis. He was subjected to heart uh, surgery with hypnosis. This was... Uh, very mentioned in the, the francophone, uh, francophone world. Yes. But we don't see this new reported in United States or in England or in, in other uh, countries. Yes. Yes. And this is a very important because it seems that there are two or three different schools of hypnosis. And this makes all the difference. Uh, a, a new school of hypnosis are, are not... Um, are not connected with the Milton Erickson uh, school, the new school of, of clinical hypnosis. And, and I think they, they are trying to discover some philosophical stone that doesn't exist. So, <laughs> yes. But yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, thank you once again. I will um, open the discussion for William to, if anybody wants to say something to this. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, thank you, Paulo. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Professor Mauricio and Paulo. So now we are going to close the broadcast on YouTube. I have, I just want to say that the next presentation to be next Saturday, to be by Professor uh, Brian Campbell. You talk about Thomas Aquinas. So here on Zoom. We, I, I would like to open the floor to the audience. I think today we have the, the, the greatest number of people participating in, in the session.